Okay, good morning to you. Uh, we have already discussed about the various components of resistance, uh, of which one of the major component is uh, wave making resistance. The other major component is the frictional resistance. Where we have seen that uh, uh, the physical uh, reasoning for the frictional resistance and how it is related to uh, shift speed or uh, flow velocity. And also we have seen it's uh, is equal to V power, uh, it is proportional to V power 1.825 that uh, we have already seen that. The next major component is uh, uh, wave making resistance. And uh, it is actually coming from the pressure disturbance due to the uh, movement of the hull. The wave making resistance of ship is related to the net force upon which acts on the ship due to the normal fluid pressure acting on, on the hull. So that is basically due to uh, pressure disturbance. When the ship moves, the ship which is treated as a pressure point, when it moves at a steady speed, uh, it generates waves of a characteristic uh, pattern. So if I mean, this wave making occurs when the body is uh, at the uh, near surface or, or at surface. Uh, but if it is deeply submerged, you do not get any wave making and uh, naturally there will be no uh, resistance due to the wave making effect. That is the case with submarines and all that which operate in a deep uh, submerged condition. The wave making resistance is not there. But when the submarine uh, comes to the surf subsurface or uh, near to the surface or at surface, uh, then wave making will be there. Then you have to you have to consider the wave making resistance also uh, for the uh, estimation of total resistance of the uh, submarine at the uh, when it operates at the surface condition. So here the body is traveling on near surface, as I said, free surface is a pressure variation cause waves, which is you know it's explained. These waves created by the vessel radiate out. It goes out. And uh, this wave possesses energy and continues a continuous loss of energy to the ship system, which amounts to the resistance of the ship that is contributed by the wave making and its sustain. So, that is what it means. So, it is associated with energy. So, we have already discussed uh, before the wave making when we discuss about the uh, wave making component of the resistance that uh, the, when the waves compared to still water condition, if you consider the uh, still water condition, I just I think I have already explained to you. When you consider a still water and the ship moving it there, so if you consider this and uh, if you take the plan view of that, just consider uh, this water line where it may be. Uh, the ship is like this. So when it is moving uh, with the velocity v, the ship is moving with the velocity v, it generates waves. We will see that it has a characteristic form of the wave. So we have waves which goes into there is a divergent wave system and also you have the uh, transverse wave system. So this constitute two wave systems and uh, these waves uh, possess energy. So you know that if you consider still water and uh, wave condition, uh, waves in still water, they, at still water there is no disturbance of the water surface. When the ship moves, it generates waves and these waves take this form and due to the water particle which was here, it has moved to this place. So this due to the elevation of the water particle, the water particle now which you know water particle possess mass and now due to the change in position of the water particle, there is an energy associated with that which you call is a potential energy. So this potential energy you represent by mg into h or h is given by this or you say if it is a eta a you put then you put it is a eta a. So that is a, a potential energy associated with that 
and we have also discussed when we discussed about the component waves water particle is subject to an orbital motion in a way which is usually circular in shape uh, in deep water condition and the water particle oscillates about its mean position that means its circulation is among with mean position particular position where it was and this again the water particle which possesses mass which is subject to a motion will have a kinetic energy associated with that to the motion. So, which is given by half mv square v is the tangential velocity of the particle when it moves to the orbit. So, now the wave possess two types of energy this is a potential energy and this is a kinetic energy. So, the wave possess energy the law of conservation of energy applies here the ship is moving it generate waves and the wave possess energy in two counts potential energy and kinetic energy. So, this energy has to come from the ship. So, that is how the energy relations are applied to the wave making resistance. So, when ship moves in still water no ocean waves considered it becomes a just a still water and the ship is moving through still water it generate waves and these waves generate uh, these waves possess energy and this energy is being lost to the ship which accounts for the wave making resistance of the ship. So, that is what is explained here and see that the energy say related to the energy dissipated in the ocean that means it is going just getting dissipated into the ocean. So, the wave making resistance can thus also be characterized by the energy expended by the ship that is necessary to maintain the wave system. So, that is what it means. So, if you look uh, to the characteristic pattern of the um, waves created by the ship uh, in still water which has been studied by Kelvin he considered a pressure point you can see here there is a pressure point I can do this P there is a pressure point which is moving having a constant speed. So, you which generates a wave pattern like this it is as good as uh, saying that you might have noticed in a um, canal uh, where is flow is uniform a free stream flow. The canals usually the irrigation canals and all that they put a pole to measure the depth of water and uh, you see that there is a wave form created in the downstream uh, and this pattern resembles this one. So, this is a typical uh, Kelvin wave pattern. So, if the speed of the vessel or you call the fruit number is within acceptable limit I mean within a, it's in a moderate or below moderate uh, usually small then this angle will have this this a half angle is not the total half angle is 19.5 degrees and this angle again the half angle is 37.5 degrees. So, this this is this shows that you know the boundary of the wave pattern created and these blue lines what you show see here they are the divergent waves which diverges out when the ship moves forward and uh, you will have another system of wave in asso uh, association with that this waves which starts from tangentially from the divergent wave and then it comes like that which gets converged towards this side and uh, that if you draw a tangent to this curve uh, it will be uh, normal to the uh, path of the particle. So, that is how it is done. So, this is a type of this is called the transverse waves. So, the total system of waves are constituted by uh, divergent waves and transverse waves. So, if you draw a line a tangential to this normal from this point and uh, from this point to a tangential to this point and over here uh, intersecting with that this angle this half angle makes 37.5 degrees and this small angle is 19.5 degrees and this is a typical character or characteristic appearance of a, a wave generated by a ship in still water and uh, that is has been observed and studied by Kelvin and known after his name as Kelvin wave. So, Kelvin wave pattern is what you have seen is a single pressure point which is traveling in a line and uh, over the still water surface and we have seen the characteristic pattern of that that is the angle then you have seen the um, um, pattern of a divergent waves and um, a transverse waves. 
So that is what is the pattern consists of transverse and divergent waves system which radiate from the point. The distance between two successive transverse waves or you call it a wavelength, the crest, the distance between two successive crests or the scope of wavelength depends on the speed of the uh, moving point or ship. So this that is this distance, this is called the, this is the wavelength, this, this is all the crest lines what you see here, the crest lines of the transverse wave and um, the distance between successive crests you normally you say it is a wavelength and this wavelength depends on the speed of the moving point or speed of the ship. So that is what it means. The crest lines of the transverse waves will be normal to the direction of motion which I have already explained. The crest lines that is if you consider the crest line and if you draw a tangent here that tangent is normal to the direction. So that is a, what it means it is normal to the direction of motion bending backward. So that is what it does it is bending backward some approach the diverse system. So from here it is bending backward you can see it is bending backward and then it is joining with the uh, divergent wave system that is the pattern of the Kelvin wave. So we looked at the ship wave system, uh, the ship if you consider a typical ship it got different uh, pressure points, it is not a single point uh, depending on the uh, shape of the ship there will be a different regions of pressure disturbances and from each region of pressure disturbance there will be a system of wave generated. So what you show here, see here is the idealized form of a water plane. What do you see? Uh, I think I have already explained that, but still for your. Uh, so, what do you do here? Yeah. You consider a ship, uh, water plane, this you consider a. Yeah, that is a uh, water plane you consider that is a water plane at which the ship is floating and this is moving forward. So you see when it is moving that means the flow is in this direction same as the, with the negative velocity of that of the ship. So this point you call it is a forward stagnation point that is a for, that means the pressure is maximum here it is a forward stagnation point. Then you have the flow coming here, when it reaches here the curvature is changing, it is not continuing like this but the curvature is changing. When the curvature changes the flow velocity increases in this case, the flow velocity increases, when the flow velocity increases the pressure drops. So that means that is the point region over which the pressure changes. So when this pressure changes there will be another system of wave generated from there. So now once it leaves this it is almost flat here, so the velocity remains same but when it comes here again the curvature is changing. So what happens the flow velocity increases in that curvature, whenever there is a curvature the velocity increases, so velocity increases there and the pressure drops and when the pressure drops again there will be another wave system created from here and finally if you consider this point is called the aft stagnation point. So aft stagnation point that is the place where the streamlines converge and that point again it is zero velocity and maximum pressure. So you there will be another system of wave created from here. So that is what is shown here in this diagram. So just to show this in a more idealist form you can see this is a water plane, this is a bow point then you are considering the change in curvature this side that is called the forward shoulder point. Then it is flat here when it comes here again the curvature changes which is called the aft shoulder point. Then finally it comes to the stem. So instead of putting the curvature here you just put straight line for you know demonstrating the wave formation. And uh, as I said before uh, this is a, a forward uh, stagnation point that is stagnation point you know that that is a point where velocity is 0. If you look to the Bernoulli's equation relation for pressure that point will have the maximum pressure is not it. You have the velocity head plus the hydrodynamic 
plus the static everything is equal to constant. So, if one head goes down other head will go up. So, here we consider same static level water level same. So, only we are just considering the half rho V square term and also the hydrodynamic term pressure. So, that means if the velocity goes to 0 hydrodynamic pressure will go up because both should be equal to constant. So, that is the principle applied. So, here the velocity is 0 which you call the forward stagnation point and the pressure will be high and when the pressure is high naturally the water surface moves up. So, you see the wave system here this is a wave system which is generated from the bow you can see this bow and bow being high pressure region the it starts with the wave crust you can see that it is a wave crust here and then it propagates backward. So, when it comes to this point it is a forward shoulder point uh, that is a region where the, as I said velocity is higher and pressure is low. When the pressure is low you can see that it starts with a crust the wave which is originating from here you can see it just starts with the crust and then it propagates backward. Then the wave system at the aft shoulder again the same situation because again the velocity increases here and pressure drops. So, the wave system here generated from here is this one. So, again at starting with a trough it is not a crust. And when it comes to this point it is a stern uh, that is an aft stagnation point. So, pressure is high and so it the wave is coming from there it is starting with a wave crust. So, these are the four wave components which are used to explain the total resultant wave system generated by a ship. So, you consider you are just actually decomposing the whole phenomena into two, uh, different components and uh, the resultant effect you get by summing up all the component effects uh, which you observe as the sea or the wave generated by the ship. So, this is the thing what you have. So, if you combine all these you can see here this is the one then you add the whole thing you get this you add the whole thing you get this. So, you linearly sum it up you get this resultant wave. So, the four components added together leads to this wave curve. So, that is a resultant wave is a total wave system of the ship. Um, so, that is this I have already explained high pressure area in the vicinity of the bow which you have seen low pressure the forward shoulder low pressure again aft shoulder I have already explained that then high pressure in the vicinity of stern. So, and then the wave making resistance depends on the ship form that is the form determines the flow velocity and also the pressure and subsequently the wave created by it. Shape of the section area curve that is if you draw the section area curve which you normally you do in one chains you see the section area curve and water lines and trans the section shape basically the form shift form which is indicated by section shape of section area curve shape of water line and shape of the transverse section. So, these forms matters in the uh, formation of uh, the waves and subsequently the wave making resistance. So, that is why you can see that the uh, faster ships you have a fine form. So, the disturbance created is less. If it is a slow ship like a tanker or a bulk carrier the um, form is fuller because wave making effect is less because the ship operates at a low fruit number or low speed. But when it comes to a container ship or maybe a passenger high speed passenger ferry and all that you make it more fine and the wave make generation effect became uh, less and because the we see later that the wave making effect is a proportional to V power 6 so which we have to consider here. We have seen the four components of waves that is a bow wave, two shoulder waves and the stern wave. So, these waves these component waves their relative position or the phase between the different components matters in the total wave system of that is not it. You have two wave systems if they are in phase they build up, if they are out of phase they may subside is not it. So, these the four waves are here four component waves we have discussed. If these waves 
the interaction effect of these waves or interference of, of these wave components determines whether it builds up or subsides. So finally our interest is only to uh, have information about the resultant wave. If the resultant wave is uh, less or the size of the wave is less then the energy associated wave will be less and then the uh, wave making resistance also comes down. You know that uh, uh, the energy of a wave is proportional to the square of the wave amplitude. So if the wave amplitude is high uh, then naturally the energy will be square times of it. So it will increase. So if these four components uh, interact in such a way that uh, the resultant wave uh, subsides that is an advantage uh, from the design point of the ship or from the wave making resistance point of the ship. So it is a, it's a responsibility of the ship designer to see that the form of the ship is generated in such a way that the waves generated from the bow and two shoulders and stern they interact and uh, interact destructively not constructively. So that is the uh, yeah that is what the interaction may be constructive or destructive. So the position of the water, uh, particle, if you consider wave, uh, two dimensional wave is considered here, you have uh, what I have shown here, uh, this uh, um, x z plane, this is x plane and uh, this is uh, maybe z you can put down, x z plane is a vertical plane, longitudinal vertical plane. Now you consider water particle, then you have orbit usually, okay, you just this is a r radius so radius of the orbit and uh, if you that is the case now you have n n is equal to 4 1 to 4 that is four wave components we have considered so you consider one of it so the x component is equal to rn sin omega n t plus epsilon n and the vertical component is given by this relation. So what do you have is uh, here okay you can see that Rn is a water particle orbital radius which I have said is orbital radius of the water particle. Omega n is a circular frequency of the wave T is a time and epsilon n is a phase angle that is if you consider two angles what is the phase difference between the two uh, waves. So these are the quantities which are which appear in this relation. So the wave trains, some assumptions here, wave trains having the same velocity also have equal wavelength and wave period. So here the one of the assumptions made in Kelvin wave is they move the, with the same speed, the, the wavelength remains same. So the wave trains, the, the, they move the same velocity, their wavelength and wave period also equal. The four wave systems following the ship can therefore only differ in height and phase because their relative position remains same, only difference is the height and the initial phase difference. The phase difference we have seen is taken at the t is equal to 0. So at t is equal to 0, what is the phase difference? If you consider two waves, uh, there is a one wave here, maybe of the one generated from the bow, maybe the, this is a wave which is generated from the shoulder or maybe from other or maybe from the stand. So you see the difference this is the phase difference. So that is how you define it, the phase difference you get from there. So the phase difference is equal for all particles and is independent of time. So this phase difference for all particle, any particle you take that phase difference remains same and it is independent of time because we said all the waves move the same velocity. So it is independent of time. So now you consider, we have already mentioned that there are four wave components, the resultant waves are obtained by superposition of these component waves. That is you are adding up all the components to get the resultant effect. That is what you have done in this, here you have this wave, these four waves. So if you want to get the resultant, you just here you have only one component you get it 
So, when it comes here you add this one, not. one is positive and the other one is negative. So, it is district energy, so you get the resultant here. So, you just add it up. So, the four components are added together to get the resultant view. So, that is what is done here. So, the x component will have r 1 for the first wave, r 2 from the second wave, r 3 and r 4. So, that is how you get the resultant of the x component. It said also same the components, the cosine of that. So, if you add all this thing that the coordinates of each particle. So, I am not going to details, it is clear. This is you are considering four waves. If the first wave having the radius of the orbit is r 1, the second wave the radius of the orbit of water particle is r 2, the third wave radius r 3 and fourth wave. So, they are going to have a different amplitude and naturally the different radius of orbit and uh, that is how it is accounted here. And you consider it, it with the independent component values and sum it up to get the total result under it. So, now if you find out r square that is for the resultant wave if you put uh, r square you have x is here is that so x square plus z square is r square is so a two dimensional wave we have considered. So, this is r square x square plus z square. Now, we have relations for x and z what you have seen here x and z are here. So, you just substitute that you come arrive at this relation. So, this is a relation for r square r 1 square plus r 2 square then plus got the couple terms here. So, with the phase differences and everything coming. So, this is if you work go through the details of that you will get this relation. The phase difference you can see here the different epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 epsilon minus. So, all these are phase difference this is the phase difference between 1 and 2 wave or this is between 1 and 4 wave like that. So, in general you can put is epsilon n minus 1 minus epsilon n by 2 pi which shows a which is same as L n minus L 1 by L 2. You can see that what is that L n and n, n should be in subscript here. This is the distance uh, from a crust of the wave in the transverse wave system n minus 1 to the nearest. So, you considering two waves nth wave and n minus 1 wave. So, find out what is the difference between the crust sub consecutive crest of the uh, these waves. So, that is a phase difference that is what is explained here divided by the length of the wave. So, wave height is uh, actually it is a wave amplitude is uh, yeah wave height sorry this is a wave height is 2 times the R n. You can see that what in the diagram which I have shown R n represents the amplitude of the wave. So, R n is amplitude of the wave and uh, so 2 times that amplitude is the wave height. So, that is how it is given. So, now you square the wave amplitude same as the, the from the previous relation the R relation from this relation you get this one you can see this is the representation of R n. The, this R n represents the wave amplitude. So, you get same substituting in place of R you get R 1 you get psi 1 same as the wave amplitude is used. So, this is a relation now which you got from the previous relation of the R term. So, from this relation reduces to this one ok. Um, now, the above relation that gives the height of the resultant wave. The energy in a uh, transverse wave system Kelvin wave E is equal to energy associated with the wave as I said is proportional to uh, amplitude square ok. And what is the exact relation energy per uh, unit surface or per meter square of the surface is total energy associated with the wave is equal to half rho g into zeta a square. This is the energy per meter square of the wave surface. So, this is a half rho g, half of that half rho g zeta a square is coming from the potential energy which you have seen and half of it is coming from the kinetic energy. So, the total is half rho g into zeta a square that is per unit surface that is per meter square. Now, you are considering a wave which is having a length L w and the breadth of the wave is b ok. L w and b how you define is uh, you consider uh,
Yes, you just consider this plane. You consider a wave. So, let's say we just consider a regular wave. So, this is a wave. So, the length means, of course, of course this is crossing the axis. The length is this is the wavelength which you get marked as LW. That is a from here to here, that is a one wavelength. And this distance you call it the, the breadth of the wave B. So, you are considering a wave which is having a length LW and breadth is equal to B. So, here you know that C prime here e energy is equal to C prime into C prime is half rho G now half rho g c prime is a constant into theta w square into the area, area is b into l w, it is a linear wave considered. So, b into l w that is. So, that gives a total area associated with the wave having a length l w and breadth b. So, that is given by this relation. Yeah, that is what I have explained, b is the breadth of the wave and l w is the length of the wave, theta w is the wave amplitude. So, we can assume that B is proportional to L W. So, you assume you take a breadth which is in the same order of the length of the wave. We see how this relation is proportional to V square. We see that, um, yeah, that is it. The wave breadth is B and the wave length is L W you consider. So, here V is equal to L W, that is the wave celerity or wave velocity is by wave length by wave period is not it, wave length divided by wave period. So, from this relation you will arrive at uh, this relation G L W by 2 pi. Now, you know how to arrive at this relation. If you have studied wave theory, uh, you must be able to. So, L W rewrite T is equal to uh, how do you put uh, 2 pi by omega. Um, you can say the period is equal to uh, 2 pi by the circular frequency and how you relate to this um, uh, that we know the wave dispersion relation K is equal to omega square by G and also you know the relation the wave length uh, LW uh, is equal to 2 pi by K or it is same as uh, 2 pi by omega square into G is not it you are substituting. So, that is what you get uh, LW. And uh, you have what you need is uh, V is equal to L W by V, that is a wave cell L by W by T, sorry. So, uh, now if you want to find out from this uh, T is a, you want to find out omega from this relation. So, omega is equal to square root of 2 pi by L W into G is not it omega and then uh, T is equal to uh, 2 pi by omega. So, 2 pi um, 2 pi by omega. So, it will become 2 pi into uh, square root of L w by 2 pi into G is not it that is that is what you get is I am I think I am correct. This is the omega and uh, T is equal to 2 pi by omega 2 pi into divided by omega that is 2 pi by this yeah that is correct. So, now what you get is V is equal to L w by. So, this you can simplify that is same as uh, you get 2 pi inside. Uh, so, you get square root of uh, 2 pi into L w by g is not it. So, L w by square root of 2 pi into L w into square root of g comes here. So, that is equal to this will go that is equal to g into L w by 2 pi the square root. I think that is the what is the relation here it is g into L w by 2 pi that is how you get the relation. So, you are coming is derived from basic uh, the wave theory 
from T you have you know what is that the period of oscillation the waves dispersion relation for coming here and you know also know the wavelength is equal to 2 pi by k for deep water condition. So then you get substituting here and getting omega and from that omega you get T and then you are putting T here then you get V is equal to square root of G into uh, LW by 2 pi that is the relation what you are getting here G into LW by 2 pi. So square root of G by 2 pi you get 1.25 into square root of L that is how you get this relation. So that which implies that LW is proportional to V square that is what is LW is proportional to V square. So and we already know breadth is proportional to wavelength that is also proportional to V square now. So if you look to the previous relation here that is how it is arrived B is proportional to LW and is proportional to V square. Why we have written this V square it has been derived from this so you get this is the V square. So now you look to the energy relation ship is generating wave you are discussing about wave making resistance and now you see the ship is moved through a distance x. The amount of energy required to maintain the wave system now can be expressed as energy that is the force Rw resistance into the distance mode x. So that energy Rw is equal to Cw into B into Lw into theta w square that we have seen that into x in relation to Lw so this is a distance in terms of it. So then it simplifies to this form B into zeta w square into x. So now you know B is proportional to V square which we have just seen and substituting it there so, so constant the proportionality constant club width and you get a new proportionality constant C here and that into V square into Cw square into x. And now that means Rw is equal to C into V square into C w, zeta w square that is a speed square into wave amplitude square okay. Now we see zeta w square we have already seen we have already seen one or two slides before uh, this is the expression for zeta w zeta w square. So just see what is happening now so zeta w1 zeta w2 so you get the same relation here so rw is proportional to cv square into zeta w square that is what is the relation rw is equal to cv square into zeta w square. Now we are substituting the expression for zeta w. So that is what is done in the bracket big expression here from the previous relation. So if you move further assume that wave heights are proportional to the pressure differences is not it wave height it is static pressure if you consider it is the height difference is not it around that. So now we know the pressure hydrodynamic pressure the velocity height is P is equal to half rho V square. So pressure is equal to proportional to V square that means the pressure here if you consider static is proportional to height or zeta w that is the pressure variation as still water and the top we have seen that is zeta w and the pressure is also given by this relation that means zeta w is proportional to V square that is what it concludes zeta w the wave height or wave amplitude is proportional to velocity square. So now you take this back that means here you can just put zeta w square in terms of that. So zeta w square will be v power 4 is not it zeta w is v square zeta w square is v power 4. So that is what is happening here you just go through this relation c v square and this is going to be v power 4. So you take v power 4 from all these terms so it will be c into v power 6. So you get Rw is equal to C V power 6 into 1 plus the other terms here. So this is the uh, expression now derived to represent the wave making resistance. This all exercise have been done to understand what is the relation between wave making and ship velocity. And now you know that the wave making resistance is proportional to V power 6. If you recall that wave uh, the frictional resistance we concluded that based on the experiments suggested by uh, some research groups fruit 
we have seen that um, frictional resistance is proportional to V power 1.825. Now that is for the frictional resistance. Now for the wave making resistance it is V power 6. So that is what is said where the first term indicates the magnitude of wave making resistance that is 1 the first term 1 into Cv power 6 that indicates the wave if the individual wave systems do not interfere. So if you looked at the relation before see he, here it is C w, zeta w1 zeta w4 this is a interference effect this is basically a couple terms which is coming from how the wave 1 and wave 4 are interacting here or wave 1 and 3 are interacting here. So this is the interactive terms or interference terms whereas these are standalone terms you can see that 1 square 2 2 square like that. So in the final expression this one refers to the standalone terms whereas this term represents the interference terms that is how the four wave components which we considered here the interfere and what is the resultant effect due to the interference which is accounted by this term. So this term takes care of the interference effect. So that is the last part of the above equation gives the interference components that is this term into Cv square represents the interference effect. So this term depending on its phase different phase it can be constructive or it can be destructive. If the phases come close then it will build up. If the phases are out then it subsides. So if it the phase in phase then you will get a uh, positive contribution from this term if they are destructive then you will get a negative effect from here. So that is why in the resistance curve you get humps and hollows in resistance curve. If you look to the next slide you can see see this is a resistance curve the resistance against V by root L you can see this is a way in which the friction goes up this is V power 1.825 it is going this way but you see the, the difference this is a total resistance. The, the, the difference between these two is a wave making component call it residuary but wave making is a major thing. So the wave making component you can just see that what is this you know how it develops with the speed of the vessel it shoots up you can see that even with the small <coughs> increment in the speed the wave making resistance shoots up. So this occurs because wave making resistance is proportional to V power 6 we have seen that. <coughs> so, if these terms they build up you get yeah I missed that point. So, it there is a humps and hollow you can see there is a hump actually the resistance curve should have gone like this. Now this portion it has moved up there is a hump in the resistance curve this is what you call the hump. Why does it happen? The waves interfere constructively. We have seen the four waves they interfere constructively. So that is why the resistance increase that means this term has added to the resistance. But if this term become negative due to the outer phase components then this is going to be a subtractive component. So then the total wave making resistance dips and that is a situation where you call it a hollow. So the, it dips then it is a hollow. So in resistance curves often you may find the humps and hollows that depends on the speed and uh, depends on the phase difference between the components. So low value of interference favorable and thus hollow is in the resistance curve. So this I have the high values go for interference effect. This is the one we have seen. Now we look go into the wave making resistance that is the next major component of resistance in a ship. So wave making it is related to you know the net force upon due to the normal fluid pressures we have already seen that if you look to the remember the diagram which I have shown the total resistance is coming the pressure resistance under which comes the wave making resistance and also the viscous pressure resistance. So the wave making resistance is due to the pressure disturbance. So that if the body is moving it generate waves and the waves keep spreading. If the body is traveling or near the surface this pressure variation causes waves 
So it generates waves uh, and uh, which radiate away from the body. And these waves, you know, we have already discussed the, the process energy and this is a loss of energy to the ship. So ship need to uh, continuously supply energy uh, for the creation and sustain of waves. So that is a continuous uh, loss of energy to the ship and which adds to the resistance offered by or termed as the wave making resistance. The wave making resistance can also characterize by the energy expended that is what I said it is related to the energy what uh, is expended by the ship to create and maintain the wave. So here you can see this is a just been studied by Kelvin and he identified that the ship can be treated as a pressure point moving, moving pressure point with steady speed and uh, it creates a characteristic wave pattern constituted by a divergent waves. You can see this diverges out that is the ships the waves which are diverging out and also waves in the transverse direction, the waves in the transverse direction and uh, which is normal here it is tangent is normal to the center line. Actually this curve should have taken a tangential here also, this is uh, wrongly drawn, it should go and make a tangent with the divergent wave. So it just curve out and merge with the divergent wave. So this is a wave pattern uh, for ships and we see maybe a later stage where it is also dependent on fruit number. Uh, and shallow water effects changes the wave pattern, uh, but this is a standard thing that is if you consider deep water and uh, vessel moving at reasonably uh, you know medium or low speed you find the pattern is identical and that is why it is uh, also called a steady wave because the pattern remains same it is not changing with respect to time. So it is a this is a wave pattern. Here Kelvin what he did is a single point pressure point travelling in a line through a surface of water that is what he considered. So if you look to that he considered a point pressure and it is moving along this direction that is what he considered. The pattern consists of a transverse and divergent waves that is what he said it pattern is you have diver, divergent waves and transverse waves. The distance between two successive transverse waves or you know it is called wave length the Texas wave uh, uh, transfer it depends on the speed of the traveling point. So this distance this is a crust line this wave. So distance between two crust is a wavelength. So this length depends on the speed of the vessel. <coughs> the crust lines of the transverse waves will be normal to the direction of motion which I have already said bend backward as they approach to the divergent system. So it is curved like this that is the um, transverse wave. Curve, curved backward it goes like that. So when you consider ship wave system, um, ship is so you can say idealized in this form. You can see this is the ideal uh, form of the ship maybe I just explained the boat how it is idealized. Um, You see this, uh, this is a, a typical uh, uh, plane of a ship, plane of view of the ship. So here uh, you have the flow velocity, ship is moving in this direction, the flow velocity is coming here, so it the flow goes like this. So here it is a gradual you know it is a steady shape. So when it comes here all of a sudden at this point the curvature changes, when the curvature changes what happens? the curvature changes there will be a change in velocity. What happens to velocity? Velocity increases here. So when velocity increases what happens to pressure? Pressure decreases, pressure drops. When there is a pressure change a wave is generated at the free surface. So you have at this point a pressure change, you have at this point the pressure, this is stagnation pressure, you have the pressure change. When it comes here then it comes after this the flow steady then when it comes here again the curvature changes. So 
there will be still then a, again a flow variation and there will be a pressure variation and a wave generation. And when it comes here, this is the next stagnation point, there also the pressure is different and hence you have the, so this can be treated as, as good as if you consider, if you consider, so you just idealize it, uh, maybe I will a lot bigger. So, this is how we can idealize a shift form. So, that is what is shown here in the, here that is what is shown here. You see this is a idealized form of the water plane of the vessel. So, this is the velocity you can see this is the bow of the ship, this is the stern of the ship and these two uh, changes, changing points are called shoulders and one in the bow is called the bow sh forward shoulder and one in the aft is called the aft shoulder. So, here what it does is you can see that <coughs> this is a bow wave system. So, you see that a wave is generated from the bow, this is the bow point see just below a bow where wave is created from the bow because this is the first point which is the pressure point moving pressure point. So, a wave is created. So, you can see also see that bow <coughs> of the ship is uh, have is a stagnation point, is not it? This portion is a stagnation point where the pressure is maximum. So, when the pressure is maximum, the water level increases. We have already seen in the one of the previous picture the bow wave problem. So, that is why the wave starts with the crust here. You can see that wave starts with the crust. So, the bow wave then it propagates, then it propagates backward, goes like this. <coughs> then it comes to here, the fore shoulder, you see there is an increase in velocity. So, what happens? The pressure decreases, Bernoulli's equation, increase in velocity reduction in pressure, when the pressure decreases there will be a dip in the water level. So, the wave starting from here is starting with a trough. So, here you can see it is a trough and then it propagates afterward. Here also there is a velocity increase changing the curvature stronger. Again it starts with the trough, that is aft shoulder wave also starts with the trough and it propagates. So, you can see that where it starts and what is the type of wave. And in the stern, the what is this, this point? That is the aft stagnation point. Again, the pressure is high there. Uh, you are not considering uh, viscosity, boundary layer, flow separation, anything here. This will be considered as a potential flow. So, here the pressure is high, it starts with the crest. So, that is how the, the four wave systems are generated from the ship. It is a you know general representation, not necessarily always. So, here there is a wave system, bow wave system, four shoulder wave system, then you have aft shoulder wave system, then the stern wave system. So, if you club all these things, sum it linearly, you see you get a resultant wave system like this. This is the sum of the four wave systems. The ship wave uh, which you see normally can be resolved or decomposed into bow components, the component coming from the bow, com, com, two components coming from the two shoulders and then the stern wave. So, these waves are this is a ship wave system. So, this the position of this waves, the phase of these waves matters, we will see it, which accounts to the total wave system and the size of the resultant wave determines the wave making resistance of that. Okay, I think we will stop now. Uh,